I start. I'm Piotr Kozaren, manager in Cisco. I'm managing the routing and swing team here in Krakow. Um, I've been in Cisco almost five years now, uh, almost in the very beginning of the Krakow Center. So I joined when the center was actually being it was established and it had been that time been growing and it has been growing till now. Um, I started with a team of uh, advanced services. I started as an engineer at that time, as a network analytic engineer responsible for technologies. In the meantime, I drove my career through a team leader position and now uh, for two years as a manager of uh, the routing and switching team. So I switched a little bit into different architecture. Uh, and this will be actually the the team that is going to be kind of um, going through this presentation because I have a few slides there and you know I will probably bring all of them in the in the same time I'm not going to talk about all of them and I'm not going to talk about all the details on the slide. I want to to get for you out of, out of this presentation is that you actually get the feeling of how you steer your career, how you can change your career, uh, what opportunities Cisco may you and know how to leverage the incubator program to, um, to become a Cisco employee in 2018. Okay. Let me go with the funny overview. Like that, if you guys see the slides correctly, do you see the slides correctly, or you do have some instruction on the slides? It's open to you. Okay, it's okay. You say okay. Thank you very much for that message. Because I have a few, 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 few um, messages open in the hand, so I can see the questions or messages from you. But if you say it correctly, then great. So you see, um, um, you see the San Francisco Bridge here. I think you, it is commission as uh, Cisco comes from uh, Silicon Valley, right? And it was published in the beginning of the of Silicon Valley and the big IT boom um, in 1984. This slide is showing more or less the history of. Of, uh, of Cisco and uh, even more history of Cisco innovation. I'd go not to bore you to death uh, to all the specific dates and all the specific technologies that are mentioned there. And the message I would like to send with this slide is that Cisco started in 1984 as a computer network company, and then we go to the, the um, one of the big depending on the technology, the biggest vendor for communications in general. So we'll see here, like, Cisco was growing the computer network technologies first, like the UGP uh, protocols or other multi-router protocols. Um, but it, and it's usually kind of um, related by people to the, to the routing and switching technologies. But at the same time, it's more than that. This is, is the communications company that actually owns the almost entire portfolio that is the modern portfolio for telecommunications or even IT companies. So we see here um, the growth of the, the routing and switching architecture. We do see the growth of, of the telephony. Uh, so in 1999, you see the first patent for IP telephony. Then you see the 2005 the security portfolio growing with uh, first multi service firewall, so you say, which is uh, still in the Cisco portfolio, obviously, well, more developed than that. Then the telepresence uh, collaboration, we see the network convergence, we see the uh, first terabit router, which is ISN 9K, still in the portfolio, still serving the service provider system. And so on and so on, and now uh, Cisco is mostly focusing on uh, transfer.
transforming into the um, software based, software defined networking. This is, um, so, this is the, uh, the, the, the history, let's say, in, in one slide. Uh, Sabo asking if you know where there's way more of us. So we, um, something I've already touched a little bit. To so say this is more how is Cisco currently covering the the market for IT. So the core you know, from the left to right hand side, you can see the mobility pillar. You can see the security pillar. You can see the collaboration pillar, which is um, probably the most recognizable by people not related to the networking companies. So you can see the web which is well own cloud service. Um, this is our uh, is our acquisition we did for for um, for tele telepresence. Jabber is our acquisition we did for um, Insta messaging, right? Which we use still now. So uh, the last slide was showing how the Cisco was growing, how the Cisco was developing its uh, own. Uh, let's say it's an, uh, this. This slide is showing how in all those that Cisco is focusing on, we are actually active also in terms of, of uh, acquisitions. Right? So acquisitions is when we buy a, a third-party company, an external company, and we kind of adapt the services, their products. Very their staff as well, so their people, their employees, into Cisco to have our portfolio being wider and better to serve the customers, right? So, um, as most of clients, our core collaboration technologies is called manager. Any other collaboration technologies we use and sell now and very successful with came through acquisitions, like as I already said, WebEx. And turn back and job. This is also fire. These are all also um, very recognizable uh, acquisitions we did in terms of the security when we were building our security portfolio. As I said, I'm now focusing mostly on the software defined piece, and that's why we now recent acquisitions are related also to, to the uh, companies and managing the. Application layers as well, not only the layers as used to in the past. But about our market leadership, same, uh, let's say, pillars we do have for, which we do have, which I already discussed. So, where Cisco is actually present on the IT market, as you see, most of them, uh, those that we were. Uh, we have been growing for uh, the almost beginning of Cisco. Our market share is, is uh, number one in the in the industry. Obviously, for routing, for switching, for wireless, um, also for voice, we are uh, chasing the the market of blade servers. Uh, we are quite fresh in, but number number two in the market. So, so this is how ambitious Cisco is. How much we invest in new technologies, how much we actually are uh, eager to to become the main vendor in IT whatsoever. The slide is showing uh, how our customers appreciate us. And not bore you too much with the numbers, although it's good to see they are growing and now pretty much close to to, to, to the five. Uh, I will just tell you that this, uh, this is coming from the customer satisfaction surveys we do with our customers. We ask them for are they happy with the system and let them um, just from one to five. Right? So the score we see now around four and a half is pretty close to five, which is very nice uh, for us. But the more important with the slide, and the numbers, which you are probably not that much interested in, is that it's how much uh, important in Cisco and in the future 
um, your future possible career in Cisco. So how important to actually work with customers. So we put lots of effort on our employees to be technically um, well developed. So you need to have a technical knowledge if you don't let's go grow uh, grow this technical knowledge for you. We have extensive programs to grow the uh, technical capabilities to transform the capabilities from one to another. In the same time, put lots of effort on our employees to be able to be successfully working with the customers. And this is something um, very important. If considering career in through Kubator, two services here in Krakow, you definitely work a lot with customers. So we'll take care of your, um, your, of your soft skill development of your collaboration, communication uh, capabilities. We're also checking that on, uh, during the program and on the potential assessment centers. It will be a lot of effort on developing this um, if you are successfully joining the team here in Iraq. Guys, if you get a chance to hear the nice uh, professional voice describing this slide, which is coming from a recording, in case you didn't just quick explanation, that shows. So, this, this slide shows um, what services is engaged into, right? So, um, they you know the way it divides, but it's made out of two main um, pillars. One is the product and infrastructure oriented, right? So we sell the routers, we sell switches, we sell infrastructure. Uh, at the same time, we have a huge services uh, portfolio offering and teams in Cisco. Services uh, would do uh, well different things. We'll talk about it in a moment. If we have three different uh, services teams, which as a potential future candidate to work with Cisco, you will uh, you will get no more of it, and you will have to kind of uh, make your own self assessment if you like to fit the best. And uh, for now, in general, on this slide, it's showing what the services are. I think on in terms of architecture, and again, we can see all the architectures that Cisco does for customers, and so networking, data center, city cloud, and collaboration, uh, Internet of Things as well, which is the uh, the new uh, or it's been ready for a while there, but it's kind of the new trend in the industry to um, to get everything connected. So it's Internet of Things or something. I we so Internet of Everything, right? So you can connect the world into the one big internet network and have um, a lot of comes um, out of it. So these are the architectures we focus on, and below the architectures you can see what the services would do, right? So we do have advisory, so as I said already before, we talk customers, we explain them um, how they can actually address their business needs with the Cisco portfolio. Then we have implementation. So we implement the products we do have in Cisco, implementing them into the customers' networks, how to um, put the um, operating mode products that our uh, sales teams would sell to the customer. Then optimization and be look at how to in the optimize customer network. So see, it's, um, let's say not maybe well configured um, related to the best practices. What more already a little bit um, outdated in the infrastructure. We what we can reset. Uh, how we can do the designs better, 
and do the design, design is more safe. We have training, which is all kinds of knowledge sharing, all kinds of pre-sales and post-sales activities we can do customers to educate them in the networking. Means we can actually, even as services, and we'll talk about it in a moment, we can manage the entire infrastructure for the customers. Now we do have cloud managed uh, services here here in Krakow, the team that do uh, that does manage the customers' networks um, out from here from from Krakow, the operating center. Technical services, which is mostly uh, helping customers with any issues they may have related to sorry related to the uh, Cisco devices that. They, um, they have in their networks or they try to implement and to do them into their networks, okay? Now, quickly, I'll talk about the uh, potential services teams you may join here in Krakow. So the systems we have here uh, that are addressing all, the, uh, all those capabilities I have just explored and, and, and explained. So advanced services, this is uh, the, the closest to my heart because, as I said at the beginning, I'm coming from a services team. And this team is uh, focusing on, mostly on the consulting role, on the consulting and optimizing role. So we do work with um, long-term projects with customers, which we call subscription projects or the business critical projects, where we work, establish a long-term relationship with customers, we understand the network, we know what's happening in the network. If security threat is coming, or any uh, end of sale, end of support event occurs, so the devices in the network are becoming updated. Others are there working with them, explaining them the, um, the impacting the network, what would be the potential mitigation for it, uh, and they act together. At the same time, um, a design and architectural work for the customer. So if customers want to implement a new solution they to address new business needs, architects are there to um, design the solution or have them choose what Cisco portfolio uh, process services can help address their business needs. In the time, our team, the services team, would do that high level design and low level design and any other documentation that is needed to simply implement the solution into the customer network. Yes, but not least, we do the implementations, migrations um, ourselves as well. So if the customer is eager to have Cisco engineers implement the solution, we are also uh, doing this for our customers. The advanced services, there Technical services, the teams that um, are widely known, uh, um, teams that is widely known as, as TAC. Um, teams are, as I said before, helping the customers with the problems that may occur in their networks all after the deployment. So the kind of a post um, post support. So. Any, any time that, uh, let's say, some issue occurs in customer network, something doesn't work, or simply the device breaks down, the line card breaks down, and you make a call to health services, or in the situation, in our engineers would connect to the network, connect to the device, check everything, and it's related to something, some failure or some bug in Cisco hardware or software, they will mitigate it. If it's related to where a uh, failure, they will go for replacement. Uh, so it's mostly focused on troubleshooting, problem solving, uh, working with customer. It's, uh, it's definitely the the uh, level of expertise among all services. So some of engineers, especially the C your services in it would really know the product, let's say the catalysts, which is finally into the 
their bytes and bits into the code of, of software. Really support the customers in every uh, most difficult case. At least it's already mentioned cloud and managed services, which operating across the architectures um, and same approach to to potential issues that may occur in customer networks. So one is that with a network operating center back here in Krakow, the companies um, are monitoring customers networks are looking into any thing might be uh, not as it should, not as to best practice that may be um, seen that may be seen as a potential issue, and they like to practically either mitigate it themselves or uh, from customer to mitigate it with with customers. So it's a proactive monitoring, it's a proactive problem solving, and um, um, network management based, so remote based. Okay. Um, this is similar, like. Optimism services for, for advanced services. This is a longer relationship with customer, long term contract, build on trust, and that, you know, that we have with customers. That's so it for the Cisco part. I hope uh, you, you are still there with me and not sitting yet. I tried to make it as crisp as possible just to give you, you know, the view on Cisco from the perspective. Um, from the perspective of the capabilities you may have as a potential candidate to join the incubator program and any teams to join this class, that's right. I'm going to bore you with any financials and stuff like that. I would like you to see that this is really about the entire world and in the architectures that are currently common. And currently common on the IT, that you can really switch your career between services teams, that you can really address your your personal needs and capabilities uh, into the service pillars that we have here in Krakow and that are really for a slightly different uh, personalities and slightly different uh, technical expertise as well. So that's that's uh, that's all at Cisco now. We'll jump into the incubator as such, what it is and, and, and uh, how we can actually leverage this to some part of Cisco if you if you if you would like to in the, in the future. Let me just quickly see if you have anyone else joining. That's what I don't see. Now quickly. Oh very good. Uh, thank you much for Warm some chat. It means that at least few people do not sleep. Uh, well, let me see also to the QA. Okay, let me check. I see one question in the chat. Let me, before we jump into Incubator, let's see. Of one one uh, question already answered. The question was do I, do I need an IT degree to do it? And the answer is yes. Um, answering marching question. Marching question is if I finish my nine month course, uh, course in Cisco Academy in Krakow CCNA, four modules, but haven't finished my CCNA test yet, do I have chance to uh, join the Cisco incubator? The answer is yes, of course. I will show you the roadmap of incubator in a moment and you'll see that. And kind of uh, catch up with with CNA over there. Uh, so no concern at all in this perspective. Now we have uh, um, one more question: How is the candidate in the identified in the team? So this um, this um, on the center we. When you when your knowledge your capabilities are being checked, and um, this is done 
usually after the incubator when we uh, when we do the assessment center for graduate program. Um, and then the assessment center does two things. First of all, we give the, uh, either uh, before assessment center or during the incubator, we give you more understanding about the roles and teams. You could kind of assess self assess yourself where would you fit in the time based on the interviews we do with you during assessment center we kind of um, in, so we sit down all together from all, all the teams and we kind of match your personal capabilities your soft skills your technical skills and, uh, where would you fit the most right and then to match together so you say for instance, technical services, and we see really the uh, potential is there, it's easy. When not much, it, it requires some um, distance with you guys when, when you know, when the hiring team is approaching you. Uh, is it possible to switch from customer support to network engineer after a while? Yes. So in general, Cisco is very open to um, is very open to to choose in within in within Cisco. It needs, it needs to be done uh, properly. It needs to be planned properly. You need to spend some time in one role before you to another, so it don't cause more confusion. And um, but rather really leverage the opportunities. But it's possible. Um, okay. Do an European can also join Cisco in Krakow? Yes, we do have multinational team. We do have people from out of Europe as well. Um, do I have a chance if I have finished training CCN IRS, CCNP, and CCN security? Uh, for Cisco incubator and, and on the assessment center from the technical point of view, this knowledge would be definitely a uh, value. Time it's not only technical knowledge we we assess. So uh, the the answer is for that yes and, and no. I said to some extent helps to have some technical expertise already there. So I encourage everyone to 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 go. Um, in time it's not the only thing we we like during assessment. Center. Are elected for incubator program. I Ah, uh, that's a question I don't know how to answer. I would need help from the this academy team. I think currently, what is happening? We kind of encourage you to um, to set your off into the program, and but if you're already automatically um, selected, or there will be some as a center for incubator itself. I can't answer. Thanks for the questions. Let's now let now uh, um, with incubator. They're gonna address so what is the incubator, what are the components, and what are the timelines. Um, how, how is it, what is in it for you? How it address your potential needs, application process. Um, and the point is uh, Cisco Incubator and ending a job at Cisco. So you can actually be a Cisco employee through through, uh, through Incubator. The bullet points that would describe, you know, what would you gain um, by joining the the Cisco Incubator. I don't want to go very detailed into them. Um, a few of them. Uh, I'm sorry. I think the main message is that um, point incubator, first of all, build some grounding for the routing and switching knowledge. So, we plan your career as a network engineer in the future or a port engineer, or generally um, related to computer networks or telecommunications as such. They're definitely based to 
visions to build professional network to uh, get some uh, uh, some move areas and also some technology insights to some professional skills and to engineers and some coaching or mentoring experience with them. So as we build the incubator program, I was answering one of the questions. I'm multicultural. Um, as a multicultural program, they will have opportunity to meet people from the, the Europe and, and the world as well um, in one place. So definitely the, uh, um, a good class as well. What we actually gain uh, through incubator as a profound technology training? So we do this that already answering one of the questions. Uh, we do the CCNA RS bootcamp, which obviously will get you the foundations of networking, which is very important for any role you would like then to um, to apply. Um, and also get you certified. Then we do have also different uh, learning opportunities uh, which are delivered by our engineers, by Cisco engineers to you. Um, what's the seminars? So big events, it's uh, um, I think full day event, uh, it's in person. Um, it's a mixture of theory and also labbing some practice, and it's uh, once a month. But uh, um, thing being delivered in Poland only, or if, if anywhere else then in the countries close to Poland. I remember there was one in in Korsa in, in Slovakia some time ago. I don't know how it's going to be this uh, this program. Um, but there are also webinars, so the sessions being driven through WebEx. And the uh, uh, presentations or lectures uh, being delivered about the uh, existing architecture. So, again, foundational knowledge, but also about the uh, new technology trends, right? So, what's happening now in the industry? Pretty much, if, you, if, you, if you're looking into the IT roles, you know that the IT industry is going rapidly fast, right? So what we start delivering to you as, uh, as um, te technology trends on the incubator program will probably already in main running, maybe piloting, but already in place in the portfolio when you uh, start your, your professional career. So hopefully. Uh, very important, important part. And the last thing is the professional skills. So you know, I was showing you this, uh, this chart with how the customers are satisfied with our service, and I was, I was telling need to, and our engineers need to um, have also this professional or soft, soft skills capabilities because we directly communicate with customers pretty much every day. So also give a little bit of, of touch. And about um, about the uh, the professional skills and also it is the individual coaching with our uh, engineers or our professionals from from Cisco Krakow. For switching bootcamp, we have um, with this this most let put it let me put it like that. So CNA RS bootcamp, which is instructor led um CCNA organ switching bootcamp again, it's more uh on here on site in in Poland. I have a CCNA e learning uh, enabled for you for those that are far away from Poland and would not be able to um, to take part in this instructor led. Uh, and then we have virtual labs, virtual classes. All the interactive content uh, modern e learning would deliver to help you with the CCNA. And last but not, we have the mentoring. 
for learning support. Uh, so if you have any issues or questions or you need support on how to be prepared uh, for CCNA RS, we do provide this help for you as well. Showing um, how you know what kind of things you could get access to through the networking academy uh, during the incubator. And, uh, let me not be too much uh, detail on this, but, but I would like to encourage you to look into how many uh, modern things are here and how much we actually look to the potential candidates into our. Uh, employees are looking into you, how we actually would like to address uh, your capabilities to learn, your capabilities to understand modern, th modern things. So you see that uh, all that is related to the mobility, you will see all that's related to cybersecurity. I is, as I said before, the, 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 the topic now, right? So how to connect the world order to actually it from um, from and you have the next essential upon all these things that are now um, up to date. Some of them you probably touched during your IT studies. So all uh, in the program as well. You got you all get access to it, and it's all in the left head column related to the um, to the specific plans that uh, Cisco supports in terms of architectures. And uh, at the very bottom, you can, and I will be repeating it from time to time, you have again the capabilities to grow your professional skills, right? So you have this beyond boss or how the um, entrepreneurship, so how to, you know, how to deliver, how to, uh, how to take ownership, how to be in the, in delivery and um, addressing the Cisco and customer business. While still being the technical engineer. Okay. Um, so this is um, showing how you can actually actively engage with Cisco, and how you, know, you actually can contribute during the program already with Cisco. So. Um, in short, in, in a few short words, we can that some of the incubator participants would really have some chance to to talk internship and so short term short term engagement in Cisco. This will be limited probably to to it will also depend on the individual capabilities and you know, differences and also what what may be a demand from. Cisco, and by the same time, there we are planning this opportunity. So, and also more related to let's say the social role or social media role is incubator ambassadors. So, how to uh, so you can also contribute back to the program by taking on of promoting the incubator itself. So, get more attention from your colleagues, peers, or younger colleagues that are interested in the future program. Uh, we do have the, um, or we do want to create a developer, a developer group. Uh, so for those of you who are interested in programming or in the normally uh, software development, we have created that for address these specific needs. Um, there will be a possibility to to join this professional coding group and also to come and get active in some activity like to open a course of the local community that would uh, that we have here in Krakow to kind of contribute back to the society. This is a little bit more about this uh, DevNet group and Python for network automation. And a few words about how is actually the incubator program itself uh, being driven. And after that, I think I will link to the Q&A or the chat.
to address your question. We, let's say, uh, delivery models uh, for the incubator, right? So they, are, they all address the incubator program that is being run by Cisco, Krakow, uh, and Brussels. So, and divided into three possible modes, you can you can join the, the program. So one is a core, and it's really addressed to those that are either local to Krakow or Brussels, or, or are close now to to open and, and to take uh, partic to take uh, um, to participate in, in these local seminars in the CCNA bootcamp and to study support and local integration events. Right. So that are, let's say, more to the its, uh, core uh, core centers in Krakow and Brussels will be able to to participate in this um, all the things that are happening. Right. So again, seminars and this this a interlet. Then we have a hub model. So this is connecting the uh, telepresence and WebEx seminars. So we use the model. Cisco technology to give you uh, all on site like uh, experience to, to to participate in incubator and can be done by the uh, by those of you who are close to the Cisco hub location so to the locations that, that with the uh, telepresence system in, in the in Cisco offices right it's like for example Madrid Lisbon Kiev these places we can leverage and you connect via telepresence so the big uh, immerse um, video video conference system that gives you the, the feeling of of being one room. And the last one, but not least one, please underestimated is the virtual mode with a web seminar, so similar uh, to this, hopefully, with technical problems at the beginning. Uh, you have still the virtual CCNA uh, possibility, so to use this e-learning uh, possibility for CCNA studying, uh, and plus CCNA study support, you still get it. Will be more, more virtual, so more, more over WebEx or, or over TP, and or in virtual mode over WebEx and half mode over TP. And we do have also some virtual integration events planned. And those of you that are joining from the uh, locations or five from four locations or half locations. Okay. Pretty much the timeline. You have say, April to July, you like this one, which we all participate in now. So we we do have students uh, on either webinars or seminars explain the program, we explain the Cisco, we explain why we do it, try to encourage you to take chances and to, you know, steer your career through a professional development program um, that Cisco can deliver for you. So this is happening till July. Then we have recruitment for the program. So referring to the previous question. You are not yet selected to the program itself. It's going to be through recruitment in um, in July. Now is actually the time to to send the applications, right? So to apply for the program. Um, and recruitment is done after we select the people that are in the program that starts in October 2017. We have. Um, in the 19th, the and then why it it's 2017 October 2017 um, the CCNA course and exam and then have the other program delivered so we have webinars seminars uh, and this possibility about the internship or time employment which I was talking before, so it's going to show up in January 2018. Uh, we may have a need and we may 
uh, to some of you to be already a part-time employee of Cisco. Um, and after the program is finished, after we have CCNA calls and exam done, program delivery done, so webinars, seminars are done. In March 2018, we do recruitment for Cisco graduate position. And Cisco graduate position is a full-time Cisco employee um, that is, uh, let's say, so-called early in career, already fully eligible to employ you with the normal Cisco contract. That thing is it's, it's kind of Cisco. And after the recruitment after the assessment centers, this can be done uh, or can end by uh, September 2018 when we actually those that were successful with the program, those that were selected during the assessment centers, Part their uh, work, right? Which I some some of you happen. The action criteria. I think I'm still the only one uh, panelist in the call, so I'll try to address those on behalf of my department colleagues. Sorry for that. Um, so, definitely communicative in English. Cisco is English language based company. We speak English in Cisco, even here in Krakow, although it's a Polish office. Uh, we do have a huge international community. It's, um, and the, let's say the office language is, is English, and of course, Optimus um, also. And use either English or the local language, but English is the math for sure. Then it must be the last year of studies, either bachelor or master, uh, or it can you can be graduated better than two years ago. Right? That's the prerequisite. Um, last year of studies is because in the entire program, if you are successful with the uh, recruitment to the graduate position. After one year, start the professional career, right? You start the full time job, so you won't be any more thing in parallel. You might still have some things to finish on the university, but it won't be the regular stack as such. Of course, basic understanding of networking fundamentals. So, we do not expect you guys to be networking experts while, while applying to the uh, to the incubator program, but at the same time, I expect that you do some homework, you do familiar with uh, understanding of networking, of you know the, the, the fundamentals, the uh, ISO OC model with you know the layers we have with the main uh, ideas around routing and switching, all that's functional to the networking. There are the basics of routing protocols and so on, we do expect that um, you do have this genetic knowledge. And important, although it's the last bullet point, but it's the most important, important we expect you to be, you know, highly motivated and willing to learn. This, on the graduate program, this is, definitely as I can tell you from the manager's perspective, it's also an important thing, right, that you really kind of the self-discussion with yourself, you do to work in the IT industry as a Cisco expert and come motivated to the program and to the and then later on to the graduate um, the graduate position willing to uh, to do it and to learn a lot and that we do not expect you to be the uh, an expert as such. But we expect that you will be uh, willing to learn a lot. And there are professional engineers here in the office behind me that would link to, to, to teach and to put knowledge and to help you grow in your careers. So then we have how can I participate in the program? Again, we try to address this as I think there's no more panelists in the call due to some technical issues. 
Um, so you need to apply for the program. Cloud Incubator, I think you've done, or we've just done together. Uh, so this done, then there is an um, application on possible. Either should have the link. If not, then you will probably get it from the Services Academy team. Uh, how you can how you can apply and how you can fill the form online. And the next step is the talent interview. After you apply, after you send the form, the first pre done with the hiring team. The candidates based on the forms you apply, the CDs you up, uh, you send, the candidates we, who they who they then call. And during the call, you share your background, you share your motivation, why you want to do it. Uh, you discuss your interest in technology, um, things we just we just covered. So how you're motivated to become one of the system employees, and how much you are really willing to to learn. Of course, the, one of the let's say basic operational, I would. Is for for such call is also to your English to see if you are already on the level that is good enough to be successful with the program and later on would show professional career. In the uh, then you you are invited if you are successful with step one and step two you're invited to the talent day. So we do the and uh, we do the final assessment of the candidate. Invited to several interviews or exercises, are individual, you all, all together in groups. After that, um, those that path that are selected are uh, joining the incubator program. It's Yeah, the so of the incubator program, how is it working as a graduate at Cisco different than a normal job? So we do some of our uh, graduates or incubator program and then graduate program grades, let me put it like that. So all these people you see here, some of them are in my team now, some of them in my are in my colleagues' team. And they went through this program either growing in Cove or in Brussels. And, and we should have some of the bits um, on the call to actually share some of the testimonies. I just need to fly in if it's possible for them to then do it. If not, then we will probably address the Q&A. Message from Daniel is there just as an attendee, so couldn't join the join the demo. from Yana. We'll okay, we'll try to fix this because I see from some of the guys that they are, uh, yeah, they're all all in uh, in the same issues, so they couldn't join the demo. But I will let invite them to the room. I am here, and they can use my audio, so you could still hear from them. So, guys, if you can come into third floor. To the lavender room. Um, there your view to the audience. Sorry, guys, again in the audience. 
but as you sometimes you need to be smart to address the technical technical issues. In the meantime, I will try to to answer some of the, um, of the questions. So I see in the Q and A, do the level of interview will be the same as it was for graduate program. So for the integrator program, we expect a bit in less, um, technical expertise from the candidate as the graduate program starts after the incubator. So it would be uh, probably difficult to expect, uh, to expect the same uh, you know, from the candidates to the incubator program. So the answer is no. We expect a bit, a bit less. Um, how many three places are there to join Cisco Incubator in Krakow? Two places. I have, I don't have this information in time. I may maybe get this information from Milena in the meantime. But in the meantime, information from Milena, it's going to be 100 places uh, this year incubator program. Hold on a moment. Uh, Congratulations here. So let me see so the our hiring expert got me in the meantime the information that it should be fast in applying because this year actually the 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 interest in the program itself is is very big and you guys if you want to application is on time and you have that you know your spot the, for the interview and telephone interview, don't to wait too long. Okay, I have Marco. Hello. 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 So, okay. you my okay. audio. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Peter, for handling the technical difficulties. So, uh, once again, thank you for joining. My name is Marco. Um, I'm a an engineer here in Cisco Krakow, and I went through the same program as you might uh, go. Uh, it, it, um, this program really helped me. It was like a springboard, uh, and, and in, in my Future, future role and in the position where I'm currently at. Um, so, um, and uh, so a little about myself. So I'm from Croatia, um, but I was studying uh, two years ago in Portugal. And there was um, a presentation about the incubator program and about the Cisco in general. And 
there I found out more about um, how it is to work for Cisco and some gen general information um, of positions, which me, which got me very interested in in the actual, uh, in the actual role. I knew that it will be a challenging, but I was up for the challenge. Um, Maybe because uh, the end goal was to be employed by Cisco, so uh, it, there was not there was it was not a it was not a hard decision. Um, about the incubator program itself, uh, as uh, Piotr mentioned, is a series of seminars and webinars where we go through of uh, uh, technical aspects of what we are actually doing here. The, um, from the technical uh, knowledge you get, you also get. Some some uh, knowledge that will be beneficial for you not only in, inside of Cisco but in general uh, in your professional life. And of course, uh, on some of the um, some of the seminars, uh, you might uh, get an interaction with the people who are actually working there. You can ask them questions, and you this best source uh, source of information for you. It was for me because uh, I was very interested in the job position, but I was also very curious about all the queries I had. And e there is not a better source than a people who actually work here, and they can tell you the best um, what act once you join. The, um, you get to know the Cisco environment, Cisco culture, and the, you get knowledge and experience. But I said it's not only about the tech aspect, you get uh, much more than that, and you get, uh, really it directs you to the path you want to go. About the assessment center, of course, everybody are nervous when with the interview, but me, the interview was um, was experience where assessors or the interviewers they made the um, things in the air much, uh, um, uh, much less successful, so I can. And also to remember that they want you to succeed. They will also they will just test you and put you in some kind of different positions and see how how can you handle them. And can I say uh, I'm working for Cisco from last year from September, and um, that Cisco is not a company which once you start working it will just throw you into the fire and. And or the water and see you can swim. Uh, not, not, it's not like that. It's opposite. You really get a steady flow. You get a lot of trainings, education, and uh, um, once you once you all information from all engineers around around you, then you are able to actually perform the job. And uh, it's a steady flow. We get a man and you can you can actually perform all in all I'm very satisfied uh, program which I had uh, in the incubator in the good position and I'm currently doing now so it will be all for me thank you very much and I will pass my word to yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. okay Hi guys, um, my name is Anna. Uh, I am from Ukraine and also I joined the Cisco after incubator program. Uh, I was uh, I have been I have been uh, seven months of graduated from the university. I had my master degree and I uh, have already been working when I joined the incubator. Uh, but uh, it was really amazing experience um, because. I'm an uh, in service provider in Ukraine, uh, but really you cannot compare this uh, because seminars uh, and webinars they gave a overview of the technology. Uh, we had access to different materials, uh, and what is the most important, uh, we were able to get this trainings from the engineers who were working on the different technologies. What I like it the most is that the uh, company provided step-by-step -step algorithm. So at the first day of your uh, seminar, you know what you have to do to succeed during Cisco. You just 
can follow the algorithm and do your best. Uh, we had access to all the materials. Uh, um, I like it. On one platform, uh, with the help of this platform, we uh, I prepared to the CCNA and passed the CCNA successfully in three uh, months. It was a requirement for us also to pass CCNA. And uh, then it was assessment to try to work in, in Cisco. Uh, what about assessment? What I can advise you? Uh, be honest <laughs> and positive and be right. As Mark mentioned, uh, engineers will help you. They want you to succeed. Um, just give, uh, yeah, just be. And we, we had role play. Uh, different situations, so you just try to apply all your knowledge, all your experience that you had uh, for students, student life, some work experience, just apply this at, uh, at the assessment. I will pass it to now. I hope you can hear me. So my name is Daniel, and I'm from Hungary. I've joined the same incubator program as the as who already spoke with. So experiences were pretty similar to them, to be honest. Um, what say that uh, I joined this program because we had a, uh, an event in Budapest. Uh, we had some tech engineers who were working, uh, talking about their technologies, and so passionate that I, I knew that I wanted to join a company that was. Act like uh, had people working for it were passionate. Just you know, not just a proper like nine to five job, but something that that uh, you want to go to and 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 you want yourself to succeed there. So that's why I joined. Like I heard about the program in October and I joined in November. And but you know, uh, next September I was already here. Uh, right now in in uh, CMS. I don't know if Yana mentioned we work in CMS. We were in the same team for a while, but right now we are different because uh, she's with a dedicated customer and I'm working for the collaboration as a service team and, and we are both uh, both a collaboration uh, engineers which which is funny because Yana mentioned in the role play but in your in your uh, assessment center and uh, mine was actually collaboration which is pretty funny because we had a collaboration seminar but I was missing that because because I had an exam or something like that final exam at my university so I had this role play without any knowledge about about uh, about collaboration uh, technologies, but what I say is what feedback I received is that they are basically looking for, for how thinking like how, how you are how you, you are to troubleshoot. So you don't. This is a program. They are not looking for professionals who are like having like five years experience already in field or, or something like that. They are looking for people who are willing to learn. Uh, they have a good mind and and they want to perform. And and if you have that. Then they good chance to actually succeed here. Yeah. Piotr, should I leave it to you? Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 We're in the end. Yes, very quickly look at the in the questions if you can is specific to our because we're just sharing their testimonials. I don't see any specific. So um just, just to finish uh Thank you much all for your time for attendance. Um, but you know, without end this presentation we have this, this yeah, this this slide. So it's like we really encourage you to 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 become one of us, one of the Cisco engineers. It's a program that at the end it may end up for you in a professional career with the industry leading vendor. Uh, at the same time it's giving you the Education is giving you the trainings, it's giving you the, the connections 
uh, the relationships you build here, and also the, the soft, the professional skills that you uh, would definitely leverage from in your further professional career. Um, thank you very much for your time. Uh, please uh, also look into our Facebook profile and you know like us over there. Um, Um, there will be also a possibility to to some other questions from Facebook um, over there. Also, we might, we will try to collect some of your questions and, and address those. Wrong. Thanks again. Apologies one more time for the technical issues we experienced uh, with with uh, enrolling our all our participants into into the into this conference At the same time i think you have have a, a good taste of creativity we sometimes need in a, a professional environment how to address issues to still deliver uh, and how to care about our customers which are in this particular case you guys and how to do things although we have um we have technical so thank you very much again. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the um, program if you if you apply for it, which I again encourage you to do. Thanks. Bye bye.